All right, welcome back to lesson two on video. We've got lesson 4.6 here. Hopefully you went through 4.5 with the sub, you corrected your mistakes, and then you turned it in. If you have extra questions, you may obviously ask the sub, or you can still call me every night until 7 o'clock. We're starting with our last theorem in this section, which is theorem 11, which is the SSS theorem, which hopefully you realize means side, side, side. And this is for congruency for triangles. You should have already had side angle side and angle side angle. So this is the third one dealing with triangles. The only ways you know to show triangles are congruent right now are side angle side, angle side angle, side side side. Well, you will after this. The theorem says if three sides of one triangle are equal to three sides of a second triangle, then the triangles are congruent. Side, side, side. Now you may be saying, can we prove this? Well, yes, we can. Again, remember, we can only prove something using something we've had from before. This is a special proof. It's going to require something different, and it's called an auxiliary figure. So for a definition here, we're going to say an auxiliary figure. is a point segment ray or line added to a figure to help with a proof. So if we have a figure and we want to prove something, we're going to add something to it. Don't start doing this all the time. You're not going to have this happen a lot, once in a while, and generally you'll know when. Most, importantly thing about, most important thing about an auxiliary figure is this. You must be able to justify it exists to use it. I can't just say, oh, I'm going to put a point over here. I have to be able to say, oh, well, these two lines intersect at a point. Why? Is there a definition? Is there a postulate? Is there a theorem? I can't say, oh, I'm just going to draw an angle. I need to be able to say, oh, product factor postulate says I can measure an angle so I can draw an angle. You have to be able to justify it exists, otherwise you can't use it. So how are we going to use it for this proof? Let me show you. It's a pretty unusual proof. Quite honestly, I don't think most people could come up with this unless they had done a lot of it. So watch, write, and again, if you get stuck, raise your hand. You can go back a little and make sure you get everything down. Let's start with our given statement. We're going to have a, two triangles, ABC and triangle DEF. And I'm going to say that AB is the same as DF. I'm going to say that BC is the same as EF. And I'm going to say that AC is the same as DE. So they have three sides that are the same in the two triangles. Let's start with our given statement again, which is written down AB equals DF. This side equals this side. I also have that BC equals EF. This side equals this side. And finally, I have that AC equals DE. So we have three sides equal in the two triangles. 
I want to prove triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DFE. So there's my given, there's my proof. Make sure you get that all down just like it's written. Let's start with our statement. Our reason. And what do I need to do to prove this? Well, let's start again with given. Let's rewrite it. No big deal. A, B, D, F. B, C, E, F. A, C, D, E. And that's given. I'm going to draw my triangle here, A, B, C, and you'll see why in just a moment. And I'm going to start adding some things to this. So I'm going to start off with adding a new ray. Let's call it ray AX. So I'm going to draw AX. I'll use the ray symbol on this just so you can see that. Such that angle CAX is equal to angle D. What allows me to draw an angle that's equal to another angle? That's going to be the protractor postulate. <clears throat> All right, good. Now, I'm also going to, on that, place a point. That's going to be point P. And I'm going to place that point, or label, P on AX such that I'm going to label P on AX such that AP equals DF. I measured an angle. Now I'm going to measure a segment. So instead of the protractor postulate, it would be the very good ruler postulate. And then I'm going to draw from P over to C. And I'm going to draw CP. This, because it's through two points, would just be postulate one. Postulate one, again, remember, says through two points there exists a line. <clears throat> now, what have I done? I've created this new triangle, APC. This triangle has this angle that's the same as angle D. We already know that AC is equal to DE, and we have that AP is equal to DF. So what I've done is I've constructed a triangle congruent to DFE, and that is triangle APC is congruent to triangle DFE. Again, what did I do? AC is equal to DE. AP is equal to DF. Angle CAP is equal to angle D. So this triangle is congruent to this triangle because they have a side, an angle, and a side. So we'd say by side, angle, side. Now how does that help us prove ABC and DFE are the same? You'll see that in a minute, just watch. Make sure you have everything up to this point. So let's go on. Now that I have these two triangles congruent, I can say that AP is equal to DF. Don't forget, your good old friend, if triangles congruent, the parts are equal by C, P, C, T, E. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are equal. But if AP equals DF, 
then we also can say by substitution that AP is equal to AB. Why? Let's go back. Well, DF is equal to AB, right? If DF is equal to AB and AP is equal to DF, then AP is equal to AB. This should be 7, not 6, excuse me, by substitution. Now I'm going to have to redraw this picture since it moved up really far, and I want to make sure you see exactly what we're doing. So I've got A, B, C. I have my new triangle, A, P, C. And I've now shown that A, P, and A, B are the same. Let me draw a new segment between B and P. What allows me to draw a segment through two points? Back to postulate one. Through two points, there is a line. And I'm going to go ahead and label this angle one, this angle three, this angle two, this angle four. Now, if you'd like, hopefully the sub can draw a bigger picture of this to the right of the board. If you have a hard time seeing it, he will have a copy of the notes as well. Let's think about this triangle ABP. If this triangle has this side equal to this side, then what must be true about 1 and 3? Well, they're opposite angles. So I can say angle 1 must be equal to angle 3 by theorem 9. Because it says, hey, if I've got two sides equal, then the angles opposite them are equal. Let's go on to 10. And right now, if you're looking at this going, okay, I don't have any idea where this is going, that's fine. When we get done, we'll wrap it up and hopefully you'll understand. I also know that PC equals FE. Back to the statement, these triangles are congruent, these segments are equal. So I can say that is by CPCTE again. But hey, wait a minute, FE was equal to BC. That was our given. FE was equal to BC, which means that PC equals FE and FE equals BC, which means PC equals BC. Again, by substitution. Basically, this is the same as the step I did here in 6 and 7, but now with these two sides. But if PC and BC are the same, just as if these two were the same, 1 and 3 were the same, well, now 2 and 4 are the same. Why? Theorem 9. We want to redraw the drawing again because we are moving up. I have A, P, C, B, 1, 3, 2, 4. Those are equal, and those are equal. Now I'm almost done. Hold on. I'm going to add these two and make this big angle. Angle 1 plus angle 2 equals angle A, B, C. And let's also do angle 3 plus angle 4 equals angle APC. Now, what was it that said I can add angles and get a bigger angle? It wasn't theorem 1, it was theorem 2 between us and Ray's theorem. Hey, wait a minute, we know that 1 and 3 are the same. We know 2 and 4 are the same. So if this equals this and this equals this, then these two added will equal these two added. So by substitution, I can say angle ABC is equal to angle APC.
Now you might have wanted to include a step right in here saying something like angle one plus angle two equals angle three plus angle four, if I simplify. But I'm not gonna say that's fully necessary here because we already said they were the same earlier. So this is more like the sprinkles on top of the chocolate cake. So now I have this angle, this whole angle, right here, equal to this whole angle right here. But I also have this side equals this side and this side equals this side, which then means this upper triangle triangle ABC is congruent to triangle APC by side, angle, side. Now right now I imagine if I was in the classroom I would hear you guys groaning going, why? What have we really done here? Let's go back and think about this. We showed this small triangle here, APC, is the same as DFE. I've now shown this triangle, APC, is the same as ABC. Which means they're both the same as, A, as uh, ABC. If they're both the same as APC, then they are congruent to each other. by corollary to definition of congruent triangles. And that, Q, E, D, was what I wanted to prove from the beginning. Think about this. Go over it. This is one I would advise watching more than once, maybe. Definitely a cool proof. Are you going to be required to do a proof like this on the test? No. It's too much. But I wanted you to at least see a really in-depth proof with an auxiliary figure. For tonight's assignment, I know you were waiting for it. Page 165. Page 165, 3 to 8, and 15 to 25. And that is all I got to say about that.